All right, guys, welcome in. Here we go again. I cannot believe it. Thursday, November the 21st, 2019. I want you guys just a little marinate in that for a minute here. It's almost Turkey Day. Holidays are just around the corner. We're also a month into the NBA season, so what better time to talk NBA? It's an abbreviated slate tonight, but... We love it here on the NBA tip-off show powered by wagertalk.com. And wouldn't you happen to know it, we got three of the best NBA cappers in town, guys, at wagertalk.com. Uh, Ski Profit, of course, Marco in Vegas, Finn at Wager Talk. Could you put another friggin' letter in there, Finn? My word, you know what that's like trying to read backwards? Damn, I'll, look at that. I'll add, I'll add another at. <laughs> Unbelievable. Double at. But I'll tell you what, guys, it's been... About a month into the season so far, I think we've all figured out. We can all agree that uh, Golden State sucks. I think we can all agree with that. So there's really oh, Golden State good again now. It's good talking to you now. Um, but Ski, we'll start with you. Let's go around the horn quick and kind of recap what the uh, what the night and what the season has been like thus far. We had you on the show yesterday, man. You, you killed it last night. Talk to us. What'd you have? What'd you like? What'd you hate? A uh, great night, yeah. And you never know what you're going to get with you, Joe. I see, uh, they're Golden State again now today. Uh, yesterday, we had a good day. Uh, the dog cash, we had the Wizards. Uh, that was a nice one. Uh, best bet, we went with the prop. Capella over 12 and a half boards. He had 12 at halftime, so that was pretty easy. And then as far as uh, other plays, I had the New York and Philly first half under cash. Boston Clippers first half under cash. And Jazz minus three cash with the one loser was the Rockets first half. Ooh, Rockets first half. Rockets go on to lose the game, which brings me into my next guess because... He had the other side there, Marco in Vegas, Marco D'Angelo. And uh, Marco, welcome in, my man. It was a profitable night for you in the NBA, was it not? Yeah, you know, beginning of the season, Joe, I don't get into the NBA uh, in college basketball full bore. I spot play uh, till we get past Thanksgiving, and then we up it. But uh, I did have a play last night. It was my uh, insider game of the week. I went with Denver. Big statement game for them last night playing at home. Houston had owned them uh, in recent years, and obviously Houston one of the looks like one of the three best teams in the West. But uh, you know me, I'm a scheduling uh, guy. I like to look at situational stuff, and I just felt it was a bad spot for Houston. They were coming off back-to-back -back blowouts mm. at home, heading out on the road. And, you know, when I looking down the road, they have the Clippers up next. So I thought it was a great spot, feeling a little fat and sassy off those big blowout wins the last two games, and then Clippers on the horizon. I thought if uh, Denver was ever going to beat the Rockets last night was the night, and they came home for me. Yeah, no, they certainly did. And uh, listen, the Rockets are going to be good. The only thing that concerns me, of course, is the depth and the bench because their bench sucks ass. Look at the numbers. They're like the least scoring bench in or at least in the bottom three or four is scoring off the bench there. So they're going to win games in the regular season. What are they going to do when March and, you know, June comes around and May? That's always the thing with Houston, that's for sure. Tony Finn joining yeah. us. Tony, welcome in. First time here to the NBA tip-off show. So uh, welcome, my man. Not sure if you had anything on the card last night, but talk to us about your NBA season thus far, man. What have you seen? What do you like? Like Marco, I start very slowly in the NBA. I'm much more, uh, I dig into college, uh, much more at this time of year than I do NBA. I want to see the changes. And as everyone knows, this offseason was a circus for the NBA. A lot of changes, a lot of personnel changes, a lot of switches. I was opposite of our good man here that had the winner with the Wizards. I Listen, if you told me that Coach Pop's team was going to shoot 55% from the floor, uh, out, you know, not out get, not get out rebounded, not turn the ball over, um, and lose to a wizard team that can't defend. I would have said you're crazy. I'm I'm still on San Antonio. I was on San Antonio. They lost straight up. Uh, let Washington shoot 100% from the floor. It seemed like 138, 132. Early in the NBA season, I've released six plays, seven plays so far. I'm under 500, um, but we're ready to dig in and, and do a little better starting tonight. All right, you know, Margo, he brings up a good point here with San Antonio because uh, watching that game last night, it just feels like I'm watching 1988 basketball all over again. I don't know if it's Popovich, like he just refused. It's like an archaic way to, like, let me shoot a two instead of a two. I don't know if he can't figure out the addition. You know, like three is more than two. But wh why do we, I don't know what it is with them, man. It's like you got to get to, it's 2019, Pop. I love you, but. Man, you can't keep just trying to play a brand of basketball we haven't seen that's been outdated for 10 years now. 
Yeah, part of it might be the personnel, but you look at it, uh, you know, you want to talk about the biggest surprises and the biggest disappointments. Well, we knew Golden State was not going to be good this year. We didn't think that they were going to have all of the injuries on top of everything else. Uh, but they're not the worst team uh, at the windows this year, and that is the San Antonio Spurs. Just 2-12 and 12 against the spread this year. If you blindly bet San Antonio uh, every game this year and you just bet $100 on them, you're already in the hole over $1,100 with uh, the Spurs this year. And on the flip side to that, one of the surprises to me, uh, and you know this is down in your neck of the woods, Joe, uh, you got the Miami Heat. Did not expect them to come out of the gate the way they have. 9-2-2 two and two against the spread. Out of the gate, uh, you're up $680 if you've rode them every game, $100 flat betting them. And, you know, it's post plane way. We have Jimmy Butler come in there. Uh, you know, Jimmy Butler, you never know what you're going to get. Uh, he can be a superstar, and he can also be a cancer in the clubhouse and uh, just not a good situation. But they're playing well, and we'll see how long that rolls. But uh, those are the two big surprises for me, obviously, out of the gate so far. Yeah, it's been uh, – I can tell you this, uh, Ski, it's been a pleasant surprise here because – I don't know. Everything you've heard about Jimmy Butler was, you know, just that. He's a head case. He can't, you know, it, it's all about him. But I can tell you, Pat Riley and company down here, Eric Spolstra, they could not be happier because he's making it so it's not about him. I mean, they beat Cleveland last night, guys. It was 75 to 36 at halftime. Jimmy Butler was like two of 20 from the field. He And they were still pounding it and he was still dishing it out. So Jimmy Butler seems to be, dare I say, role model for some of the younger guys, Nunn and Winslow coming into his own. Am I missing something here, or maybe did did Butler just get the, a bad rap? Uh, I think he did get a bad rap. I mean, we all I, I know at least he's for sure had the talent to do what he's doing. It just looks like he's comfortable. He's finally found a home. Um, I like what they're doing over there in Miami. Uh, definitely surprising, like Marco said, for them to have this kind of start to the year. I didn't expect that. But I definitely expected Jimmy Butler to do great things as he's doing. And, um, I mean, given his rap the past couple of years, it is interesting to see him, uh, them talking about him as a role model. Yeah, it's, it's kind of mind-blowing here. But at some point, they're not going to shoot you know, 67% like they're doing here. Miami's just shooting lights out. Goran Dragic up for the sixth man of the year. It's absolutely crazy. Uh, all right, let's take a look at the board here tonight, guys. Two games, abbreviated slate. We'll take a look at the market here first to see exactly what's been going on. You have Portland at Milwaukee, 8 o'clock. And uh, right now, I mean, listen, it opened up at uh, Milwaukee laying 12. It's been pushed to 13 at this point. It opened up at 230. I'm seeing a bunch of 229 and a half, so 229 out there at this point. And uh, Mark, I'll start with you. It looks like a smaller percentage. Uh, you got 54% of the bets on Milwaukee representing 78% of the money in this one. So give us your thoughts here on, uh, on Portland, Milwaukee tonight in this. Yeah, Joe, you know, you said about the total, and if you looked early this morning, there was money come in on the under. This thing actually went as low as 227 and a half. And anytime you see money coming in early on a card, on an under especially, that's sharp money. The public is not out there running to bet the uh, unders in the NBA, that's for sure, especially when you had a game like you had last night. Uh, with Milwaukee, they were on the road. They were at Atlanta. And they were in a high-scoring game. 262 was the total last night uh, combined between them in a 135-127 game against Atlanta. But now they're back home. They are playing their third game in four nights, so that's a little bit of a problem. But what I'm looking at in this one, and it's Portland. They're on a long road trip, guys. This is their fourth game of a six-game road trip. And they're going to be playing their third game in four nights. The thing of it is, and you look at what Portland's been doing, uh, obviously they're not playing well. They've been just a complete money burner. Uh, and they've got two wins since the beginning of November. But look at their schedule. When this six-game road trip is over, they are going to have played over their last 17 games. 13 of the 17 are going to have been on the road. And what's that mean for tonight? Not a lot. But what it does mean moving forward, this is going to be a team that right now is a play against team, mm. but somewhere down the line, uh, because everybody's going to see how bad they've played over the last month, 
they're going to be undervalued. Okay, you're going to be laying a premium to play against them, which is a value for us once they get back to a normal schedule and have some games at home and have proper rest. Uh, granted, Portland's not one of the premier teams in the West, obviously, but they're not as bad as they're playing now. So just take a note and watch when this team finishes this road trip and gets back home and you start to see them play a little bit better. The market's all slow. Yeah. And start playing good again. So there'll be value on them down the road. But right now, for me in this one, I think there's value on the under tonight. And I like Milwaukee coming back home off of that game last night. I think it was a case with Milwaukee where playing back to back nights, knew they were coming back home and have to play again in the travel. It kind of, I don't want to say melded in, but didn't play the same type of defense intensity wise. Normally would play, and I think anytime you uh, play intensity, and if you're a little bit tired, you're going to show it on the defensive end of the floor. So if they were going to rest a little bit, it was going to be on defense. I think you'll see a better performance from them tonight. Look, last night Atlanta shot almost 46 percent from the floor. The three previous games to that, Milwaukee held their opponents to 40, 32, and 40 percent from the floor. I think that's the type of performance you'll see tonight. So for me, on the game itself, I like the under. And later on in props, I'm going to have a second uh, play in this game. All right, perfect there. And uh, Ski, let me ask you. Of course, uh, we're talking. Uh, Portland and you and I talked a couple of days ago, man. That that means we get mellow. We get our second crack. I got mellow now. I don't know. Uh, you expect another twenty-four? I smell a prop somewhere around here, but I don't know. Mellow twenty-four minutes, five fouls, five turnovers. You know, four fourteen. Uh, it looked like they were content on letting him kind of get his legs and do what he needed to do. They ran the offense through him. Lillard is still out. What do you think you're going to see tonight in this game, man? Oh, well, from Melo, I think definitely just letting him get more comfortable. And I'll say, Marco brought up a lot of great points. Um, I think Portland will be a play on team down the road. Another team, I think, will be the Spurs, but we, we can touch on that when that comes up. Um, I agree with Marco on the total in this game. The reason that the Sharps are better than the under is who's going to score for Portland? There's no Damian Lillard. Um, Whiteside is questionable. Uh, Simons is questionable. I don't see any points coming from this Portland side, and we know Milwaukee is capable of playing defense. Uh, thing I think you touched on, Joe, or maybe Marco did, but three games and four nights, mm. and they're on a back-to-back. -back. So injuries plus the back-to-back, -back, I think that that means less points in this game. So I agree with that. Yep, that's for sure. And, uh, and Finn, what do you think, man? Portland, uh, Milwaukee already. Giannis, uh, the favored for the MVP. What a shock. Him, Harden. It's funny, too. I looked up the uh, the future odds for the MVP of the NBA, guys, and Kawhi, you got to go all the way down to, like, number seven before you get to uh, Kawhi Leonard's name. You got LeBron. You got, uh, of course, Anthony Davis. But the guy at the top is Giannis here tonight. So what do you think here? Uh, what do you think, Tony? Milwaukee, Portland, you, uh, you riding the under as well? I'll give you a quick... My quick preview, but first is if, Le if the Lakers play like they're playing, and LeBron does what he's doing, which is essentially saying, you know, I can do anything I want to do. I'm just going to lead the league in assists this year. I'm going to be the, uh, the best 80-year-old uh, point guard ever since Jason Kidd. Now, let's go to the other game here, and that would be Portland. Uh, Portland's made some bad moves in the offseason or, or lost some guys that were key players. Curry, a lot of key role players off the bench. This isn't a very good bench for Portland. They have four significant injuries. They don't defend the perimeter. People, teams are having their way with uh, with the three-point shot against Portland. A lot of it has to do with, with the new personnel and getting adjusted. And now, what do they do? They bring in Carmelo Anthony. Mm. So there's another adjustment. Here's my here's my question. I'm going to tell you right now, Milwaukee spread their minutes out last night. They, they're, Portland's not going into Milwaukee and winning. Is Milwaukee going to cover a 13? Uh, I'm not going to even talk to that right now. What I'll say is this. Dwight Howard didn't have to reinvent himself. Though his role with the Lakers is clear cut. How does Carmelo Anthony reinvent himself? He's not going to score like he used to score, and that's what he did. So this Portland team, I don't know what they're doing as an organization right now, um, but they're going, to have, they're going to have to get a lot better, a lot more cohesive, and they're going to get a lot healthier before I'll back them. That's my opinion. All right. There you go. So there you go, guys. You got uh, one game in the books here, and now would be a good time to remind you 
Each one of these guys, Ski, Tony, Marco, all available. One spot, guys. It's pretty simple. Wagertalk.com is where you can go. Packages and plays each and every day. And, of course, it's the NBA tip-off show powered by Wager Talk. But let's not forget, guys, uh, all of these guys here, uh, college football, NFL, of course, the NBA, all available at wagertalk.com. All you guys got to do is not now, and as soon as we're done here, just type it in, Wager Talk. Don't leave now. We still got another game to go. Wagertalk.com is where you can get them, guys. So let's take a look at the market here for game number two here tonight, guys. Phoenix Suns, the surprising Phoenix Suns, huh? Look at that. We all thought they'd win. Uh, well, we all thought they'd be better, but I don't know if we expected this, guys. Uh, line opens up. Uh, get this. Phoenix, three-point favorite. Total is 233. It's already been pushed up to four points, uh, and the total's hanging strong there. Only uh, I'm seeing a 234 or two there and 233s and a half, but... Um, I'll start with uh, I'll start with Yuski here. Thirty five percent of the bets, fifty six percent of the money back in the spread, and taking the road dog here, New Orleans Pelicans tonight. What are your thoughts on this game? Well, Pelicans haven't been necessarily good on the road, but they've been playing better lately. They're uh, five and one against the number the last six games. They got Brandon Ingram back last game. Um, I think he's going to have a great game here in this one, Phoenix. They started off great. Everybody was loving Phoenix, and now we're seeing them regress. This is their third game in four nights. Uh, they've lost two straight. They've lost four of their last six. I mean, I, when, when is everybody going to hop off the Phoenix train? Oh, I like New Orleans. Lonzo Ball is in the lineup. Uh, they're not going to have Josh Hart. They're not going to have favors. But as long as we have Ingram, Holiday, and Reddick, Holiday is a great defender. He can uh, limit Booker a little bit. Lonzo's a great defender. He can limit Booker. Rubio, he's the engine that makes the Suns go. He's doubtful in this one. If he's not going to play, I love the Pelicans. And also, Baines is not playing. Uh, where are the rebounds coming from? They're going to be really small in Phoenix. Well, you know, I'll tell you, Tony, um, it's not uh, – It's not New Orleans playing better. I mean, can we can we be – you know, let's be realistic here. We, we still got no Zion. And they are pretty deep. I mean, it was going to take a little while for them to figure out the rotations and what they were going to do with Ball and everybody else. They seem to be coming together. I think once once Zion gets back in the picture, this is going to be an interesting team. But do you like them on the road? I do like. And I said, I'm not going to back them. I'm not going to play them. I'm not going to release them. But uh, there's some connections here. Gentry uh, and Phoenix obviously have this connection there. But more so than anything is that uh, I agree with Skeet, and that is this Phoenix Suns team has begun the regression. You said, when are we going to people going to jump off that train? I've jumped off of it. Mm. Uh, their last two losses, uh, shorthanded, albeit against Boston, they were in a perfect position to pick Boston off. Boston coming out of L.A., out of Sables, should have been tired, long road trip, uh, west, east to west. Uh, but they were shorthanded. They failed miserably, miserably in that game. Their last game, they lost to a Sacramento Kings team that's damaged goods and, and not going to be very good. Uh, again, another game that they, sh I think, if you're going to be an up-and-comer, and you're going to be a surprise. You have to win those games, uh, even if it's on the road. Tonight, uh, I, I like, listen, I like Gentry as a coach. A lot of people disagree with me. But if he's going to win a game on this three-game road trip, it's tonight. He's got to go to Utah. He's got to play uh, the Jazz and the Clippers. If they're going to win a, a game on this trip, they're going to go all out. They're going to do it tonight. Yeah, it's, um, you know, Marco, it's an interesting spot here. You got Zion probably out for another month. Lonzo sideline indefinitely. Derek Favors, Okafor, Josh Hot, all questionable for this game against Phoenix. You got Phoenix seven and six here. Devin Booker twenty five five and three. Obviously, uh, they're riding him here. But I don't know. Are you shocked by the uh, what we're seeing from Phoenix to this point? And and do you like him as a favorite laying this number? Well, I don't like them at this number. It's a pretty big number for them to be laying. And uh, they're coming. They're another team that's playing three games in four nights. Uh, they played that back-to-back. -back, uh, as Tony mentioned, they had Boston at home. And then they went on the road and played uh, Tuesday night at Sacramento. And a game at Sacramento, that game was over basically eight minutes into the game. Yeah. They got behind 22-9 to nine to start that game and was playing catch-up the entire way. They never really got it under double digits till in the fourth quarter uh, and made it look like a close game at the end, which it really wasn't. All they did was spend a lot of energy trying to catch up. You look at this team, and I look at New Orleans starting the road trip, and a little angle I like to look at is when a team starts a road trip, 
especially when you're heading, you know, a West Coast team heading East or East heading West. I like to look at that team in the first game of the road trip. That's when you're going to get the most focus from the team, especially if they're starting the road trip on a winning streak because you want to keep that momentum going. Uh, there's no distractions. You're out on the road. You're, you know, focused, trying to, you know, keep the streak alive. So that would lean me looking a little bit at New Orleans. But where I think I like the play the best tonight is because of these two teams, uh, the scheduling situation with Phoenix and how much energy they used the other night in trying to come back. I like the over in this game, and it's a high total. And a lot of people are going to look at it and say, this might just be too high. Well, guys, let's look at the defense here with these two teams. Uh, New Orleans is 23rd defensively, allowing 48% shooting uh, on the season. And we look at Phoenix. Uh, these are two teams offensively that likes to shoot the three-point ball. Uh, these two teams... New Orleans is number two at hitting 15 threes per game, and Phoenix is number seven hitting 13 threes per game. We got bad defensive teams, good three-pointing shooting teams, and a little bit of scheduling with tired, and we talked about when you're tired, you don't play defense. I got to look to the over in this one. I think this is one of these games where you got two marginal uh, teams meeting up against one another. They don't know how to play good defense. You're going to see a fun game. These are the kind of games that are fun to watch because it's going to be up and down the floor. I like over the 233 and a half. Over 233 and a half here tonight, game. It is a short, it's a short card, guys. You got it. Portland, Milwaukee. You got New Orleans. You got Phoenix here tonight, a couple of plays, and I know, Ski, you had mentioned uh, maybe, uh, I know Marco, a prop or two here in this game. So, Ski, I'll ask you, what is uh, what is a prop or two you're looking at tonight? Um, well, you know, I don't love both, so I'll just mention one. Uh, I'll look at Brooke Lopez rebounds, and the reason being, uh, he's had over five rebounds three of his last four games. Uh, looking at the last five game stats for both of these teams, rebound percentage, Milwaukee's fourth. Portland is 24th, so a big advantage on the boards as it is. With Whiteside questionable, if he doesn't play, even more opportunity to get rebounds. So I like Lopez over the five or five and a half rebounds. Now, before uh, before I get your uh, your player, Mark, I want to ask you, because we've talked um, uh, to each, uh, each capper that's come on this week, it's interesting. Load management is really a giant pain in the ass, um, and it's certainly a pain in the ass when you're trying to figure out when you're going to send your plays out, when you post your play, because... It gets to be a little difficult, Marco, when you're like, all right, here's my play, and then voila, nine guys aren't playing. Hell, they, half the bus is not even coming. It's like, what the? Um, so when do you, you know, what is the, the style? If somebody goes to your page on Wager Talk there, when do, when do you look for the plays? When do you like to post them? For me, it's generally around uh, between 11 and 12.30 Eastern time that I'm going to put the stuff up uh, for the daily sports. Now, obviously, when we're doing stuff with football, uh, unless I'm concerned about a total with weather or something, I'm going to have it up, you know, generally the night before or very early in the morning. But basketball, it's become that thing. And you'll be able to see patterns. I mean, we've seen the pattern in the last two years with Kawhi Leonard. He's not going to play on a back-to-back. -back, and it's just the guessing of which game is he going to sit out. Um, personally, this is a pet peeve of mine. I don't like it, Joe. And I, I think it's not fair to um, the NBA fans. Uh, you know, if you look at a schedule, your team, and you've got, uh, you know, LeBron coming to town or Kawhi Leonard coming to town, and you want to take your kid to the game, and you know what NBA – ticket prices are especially for the marquee teams and players and then all of a sudden you, you know you've got that ticket bought you're going to the game and you find out three hours before game time that superstar that your kid wanted to see is not in the lineup mm. uh that's a crock you know why can't they you know if, if you want to rest them fine load management how about just, you know, maybe play him limited minutes, but at least play him uh, so that the fans get to see them. You know, especially when it's a, a Western Conference versus an Eastern Conference, you get one shot to see them, you know, in your building. Uh, I, that's a pet peeve for me is a fan standpoint, and it's a pain in the ass, as you said, from a handicapping standpoint. Yeah. Where, what about it, Tony? When uh, when do you like to put the plays out for the uh, for the NBA, man? Because it it's a pain in the ass. I mean, it really is. Yeah. I, I would say 
four or five years ago, I'd put them. I put a lot of overnights. Oh, I don't do that anymore. The load management, and I'm not going to complain about load management. It's a problem in the NBA, as Marco said, for the most part, because it's the players they come to see. It's not like hockey where your goalie is uh, the load. There's been load management there for years, guys. Uh, but they don't complain when you're starting the goaltender necessarily isn't in net. If Leonard's not on the floor, if uh, if uh, if your stars are on the court, it's a problem. So it's a problem for the NBA much more so than any other sport. I, at this point in time, am much like Marco, it'll be morning. It'll be uh, early Pacific time, uh, mid-morning Eastern time, typically when I release NBA. I, I want to I, I, I wanna be pretty careful right now. And, and Ski, how about East Coast, West Coast games? Obviously, uh, a little time difference there with these uh, late games. But does it matter for you, you putting them all out at the same time as well, man? Um, I mean, I, I would prefer to to know the information, but I mean, at the same time, when I dig enough, like for instance, this New Orleans and Phoenix game, waiting on a couple of players, like when I dig enough, I can put it out early. And it's probably between 10 a.m. Eastern and 1 uh, p.m. Eastern that I'll at least have one play out. The rest of them will probably come throughout the day. Okay, which is, uh, guys, it also helps to uh, grab yourself packages three days, seven day, uh, you know, yeah. 30 days. So this way you don't have to worry about it. It's there. You'll automatically get notified once the uh, once the plays are posted. So you, know, you don't got to go searching for anything. It's so much easier, so much more, you know, listen, cost effective too and not have to worry about it. You don't want to miss out on a play. These guys, as you can tell, they're doing a little bit of work here, all right? They have no life. Look at these guys. God damn. What do you think they do? <laughs> Look at Finn. Do I need to explain uh, anything more to you? No! Are you kidding me here? This is ridiculous. Heart attack. <laughs> but I want to ask you each year uh, here, speaking of load management quick before we close with some of the uh, with the best plays of the day, uh, did we or did we not, Marco, see a possible precursor to the NBA Finals last night with the Clippers and the Celtics? Uh, definitely the Clippers. Uh, I think they're the best team. They're, they're the complete team. They've got the offense. They got the defense and more so the defense. Uh, we know that once you get to playoff time, you got to be able to play defense. Boston, you know, this is a team that I thought last year was their year to do it. And this might be addition by subtraction. Uh, with the uh, you know the personnel that they changed over, I think the roster that they have right now it's a more cohesive unit. Not uh, you know some problem childs there. I don't want to call them out, but uh, uh, you know who I'm talking about. Uh, it's no longer there, and it's a situation where uh, the East is open. It's Boston, it's Milwaukee, and it's Philadelphia. Uh, Miami's making an early bid, but let's see if this is sustainable the whole season. And Jimmy Butler can be that good son uh, for Miami. And he probably will be because clearly he is the star there. He doesn't have to, sh you know, he doesn't have to share that spotlight, which I think that's when the problem was the most evident. In Philadelphia, I did not understand him going to Philadelphia at all. There was just too many stars and not enough balls. Yep. Uh, and that's, you know, that's not the case down there. So we'll see. But I agree with you. Uh, Boston is one of the favorites to do it. But if you ask me right now to put it, who's it going to be? Mm -hmm. I'm going to go Milwaukee and Clippers. I'd like to see Morris uh, just level uh, Embiid last night. I'd have pissed my pants watching it happen, too, as, he, as they all tried to get in with, like, are you crazy? Like, that dude, that dude, like, eats shoes. Like, dude, do not go near him. Like, he is out of his mind. Uh, Finn, did you, did you see uh, the game last night, or do you think – because to me, it is addition by subtraction, and you didn't have Kemba Walker having a great night. Uh, Smart didn't have a great night. They didn't have a great shooting night, but damn, Jason Tatum, man, carried that team going up against Paul George, going up against Kawhi Leonard. They finally played together for the first time, and really, he's the reason why they even made it. They were up by seven with two minutes left to go. Uh, they kind of didn't make a shot at the end, but... Boston, to me, seems to be playing some inspired basketball here. Do you buy Boston as a legit no. contender in the East? I don't, but that, that's just me. I mean, they're going to be a, con they're a contender right now. Uh, I think they have a big hole in the middle of their lineup. I, they can't – They can't. If, when Embiid faces Boston, it's Embiid. It's Embiid. What, who, how are they going to stop Embiid? They don't have what I think they need for playoff basketball in the middle. They're a great defensive team. I think they're coached well. But Milwaukee's the team, guys. Milwaukee, and, and I still think Philly's very, uh, they're just so volatile. You never know what you're getting with this group. And a big part of it 
is indeed. Um, uh, but I will say this. When Simmons hits three-pointers, they're going to be tough to beat, right? Oh, holy crap. Oh. You see the whole city of Philadelphia. <laughs> oh, my. Word. Marco, a three-pointer? A three-pointer? Three like, are you serious? Oh, my. I am shocked they didn't just call timeout, put it up on the board, give him a trophy. Oh, my word. Ski, what is going on? Is Philadelphia okay, man? I know you know some people in Philadelphia. So is it? are they okay? Did they recover from him hitting one three? <laughs> yeah, they're probably all hung over. I know I got alerts on my phone. I didn't like it because I was on the first half under. My play still won, but I was happy for him though. Uh, <laughs> yeah, you hey Joe, or what? Um, you know, this is my thing. If I had to pick one team, I would probably roll with Philadelphia. But the reason I would stay away is because of the coach and because I think Ben Simmons holds them back in the playoffs. So because of that, I still give Boston a chance. I'm out on Milwaukee because they lost Brogdon, mm. and I think he was a big part of what they did in the playoffs, and they need another playmaker and player like that. Um, so I'm out on Milwaukee. But I think Boston can definitely do it. And as far as the West Coast, no, not the Clippers. It's the Lakers, guys. Come on now. Oh, it, is, oh, it is. It is. Shots yes, fired. It is. Shots fired. <laughs> <laughs> Who are you going with, Mar I mean, Mark, are you, are you – Paul George, listen, Kawhi Leonard, if they stay healthy, is there – I mean – that bench really yeah you know I'm a big Kawhi Leonard fan I'm not a fan of the sitting but I'm a big fan of Kawhi Leonard and uh I think the Clippers when it comes head to head against the Lakers uh defense wins and I know LeBron he's playing some good defense this year he's like you know he's been called out a little bit and you know he's doing it let's see if he does it for the entire year uh and then you got to keep Anthony Davis healthy we saw that in the last couple of years that mm -hmm. that's uh, something that hasn't been able. But one last note on Ben Simmons and hitting a three-pointer. <laughs> How often that happens is, uh, which happens more often, Ben Simmons hitting a three-pointer, Ralph Michael saying no to a Miller Lite, oh, or me passing up the dessert uh, section of the buffet here in Vegas. That's just Simmons wins. That's an impossible question. Simmons wins. <laughs> I mean, hell, Ralph Michaels has got, you know, tinfoil in his pockets along with you, man. I don't know what it is. You guys, there isn't a buffet safe in town with you two guys. I, that's just an impossible task over here. All right, guys, roll it around the horn for me, Ski. I'll start with you. Give me uh, give me your best bet here tonight. That And, and by the way, I know Marco and uh, Tony just joining us, and we've kind of put together a, um, a, a little... I don't know. Let's just say a what if, right? So what if, let's just say you're walking down the street in Vegas, you come across a, a duffel bag, you open it as an envelope, there's a thousand bucks in it. You got a dime. Who are you making the play on tonight if you had to spend the money? Ski, go. We're going to do the, the dog after this, right? Yes. All right. I'll, I'll rock with the under in the Portland and Milwaukee. It's hard to see where the points are coming from, from Portland side okay. and uh, Milwaukee on that back-to-back. All right, so go ahead, Marco. A thousand, but you just found it in the streets. It's not Ralph Michaels, and you can't buy Miller Lite in the case of it or go to the buffet, brother. You got to make a bet. Who are you betting? Can't go to the strip club either. No, oh, God, no, no. A thousand? What the hell are you going to do? That's that's admission. Stop it. <laughs> Man, I don't want to go to the clubs you're going to, dude. Uh, I'm going uh, same game as Ski, but I'm going to – take the prop here and I'm going to go with the team total and take Portland under 108 because I agree 100% where are the points going to come from for Portland against this Milwaukee defense go under 108 team total Portland come on Finn you got a thousand bucks you just found it man you're going to the window what are you playing tonight Milwaukee first half minus seven wow, I like a lot that. more to luck Mortal Lock. Oh, damn. He's yeah. bringing in the Mortal Lock. <laughs> All right. Now, who is, uh, which one of you? I know, uh, Ski, you've got, uh, you do. You got a dog here you, that you're uh, you're interested in. That's right. Uh, I'm going to go to the other game, and I'm rocking with uh, New Orleans. I think Phoenix are frauds, Ooh. and we see that regression coming. So, I'm up. Get off the Phoenix train. Rock with New Orleans. Wow. Marco Finn, you're going to you're gonna counter a uh, dog? You got, a, uh, you got any uh, underdogs, or are you going uh, a little chalky here tonight? Well, if uh, if I was going to take a dog tonight, it would be the Pelicans. Uh, but I'm on the over in that game. And just throw out a stat. Since I don't have a uh, dog outright for you guys, I'll give you a stat on that over in that game. Mm. New Orleans, the last three seasons when they play the Pacific Division uh, teams, 
29 and 15 to the over. And now, like I said, we got that matchup with bad defense in teams that chuck the three. Mm -hmm. I'm going over. That's Love the only it. way to go. Love it. All right, Finn, you got, uh, you like, uh, I know you're going Milwaukee. Is there any sort of uh, plus money uh, bet on the card you like? A little dog of some sort? They'll stay with the same team. I'll take, I'll take New Orleans first half plus a, plus a bucket. Okay. A two, two or three depends on your shop. Love that. All right, guys. And, uh, of course, uh, plays are up. Wagertalk.com. Uh, and make sure you see the uh, the Twitter handles there, guys. Make sure you're tailing these guys. Always great information coming your way. At Ski Profit, at Marco in Vegas, at Finn at uh, – Jesus. At Finn at Wagertalk.com. I got to clap that out like hooked on phonics here, Tony. Jesus. At Finn at Wagertalk is where you can get him. Make sure you're tailing him. But, of course, guys, Wagertalk.com. That's where the plays are at. Do yourself a favor. Three days, seven day, 30 days, six months, all season long packages available right now at wagertalk.com. So, Marco, Ski, Tony, appreciate the time, fellas. Good luck with your Thank plays you. here tonight. We'll talk to you again next week. Ciao. Take care. It. Enjoy, Later, guys. guys, the NBA tip off show powered by wagertalk.com. Good luck, guys.